Dear friends, welcome to this new podcast in which I would like to introduce you some new melanoma structures, some new features that were recently described and they are mainly useful to recognize melanoma in situ, so very early and very, very small uh, melanomas. Of course, I'm sure that we, most of you are very familiar with the classic melanoma criteria. You know this list. You have uh, listened many times uh, about these features. You have seen, I'm sure, uh, beautiful examples of these structures that have been described many years ago and we know them quite well to typify melanoma. But remember that most of these structures have been described in the context of somehow advanced melanomas, so not in the context of very early tumors. So the question remains open, uh, which of these structures are present at the very, very beginning, at the stage when the tumor is still in situ, it's still intraepidermal, because today this is our goal, to diagnose melanoma in situ, if possible. So this is what we did in this study, in this multicentric study. Uh, quite uh, recently, we included practically a good number of melanomas in situ and a control group consisting of tumors of, of many different diagnoses uh, that you can see in this uh, table here. And let's see now uh, what we found to typify melanoma in situ. First of all, concerning the global pattern, already here we have an interesting finding because we can see that the multi-component global pattern, which is of course known to characterize melanoma, here in the group of melanoma in situ was not so frequent, which is reasonable of course because these early melanomas are not yet so asymmetric. So the majority of these melanomas in situ did not uh, display a multi-component pattern, but as a reticular one. Then, uh, speaking always about frequencies of criteria, uh, the, the classic features that we knew uh, since years, of course, were present in some melanomas in, uh, in situ, but uh, as you can see from, from the percentages, not in many. The, uh, the most frequent classic features that we found were atypical network and uh, regression. So uh, this is, I would say, the most common uh, dermatoscopic aspect of melanoma in situ, a flat reticular lesion with uh, atypical network and some areas of uh, regression. And then here we come to the three new structures that were uh, described and validated in this uh, study. Uh, irregular hyperpigmented areas, prominent skin markings and angulated lines. Here you can see a characteristic example of each one of them, but I will explain them more analytically one by one. Starting with the most frequent of these three new structures and maybe the most important from a diagnostic perspective, which are these small hyperpigmented, almost black uh, areas of irregular shape. These are areas that otherwise you could not classify because they are they don't correspond to any known structure. They are not globules, they are not network, they are not, uh, I don't know, circles or whatever else. They have an irregular shape and they clearly are, are darkly pigmented. Very probably this dark pigmentation corresponds to an initial phase of budgetoid spread of upward migration of the melanoma cells in the epidermis. That's why we see black color. And here you can see another example of a melanoma in situ with these small, tiny black or dark brown uh, areas. And here in this panel, you can see several examples of these small structures, of these small, irregular, hyperpigmented areas, uh, which uh, were shown to predict melanoma in situ very strongly. Then the second feature was not really new, it had been described a few years ago uh, to typify melanoma especially on sun damaged skin. This was the initial study in which this structure, this feature was described. Angulated lines or polygons is the name of this structure and in fact this is quite similar 
to the very well-known rhomboidal structures or zigzag lines of Lentigo maligna, which is anyhow a type of melanoma developing on sun-damaged skin. So this feature uh, is the second important feature that we need to remember. And the third one, which is a little bit controversial, let me tell you, are the so-called prominent skin markings, these uh, hyp hypopigmented creases of the skin that you can see inside the lesion much better as compared to outside uh, to the skin outside the lesion here look at another example in which uh, the skin markings these white lines inside the lesion uh, which correspond to the normal creases of the skin are are much better uh, are much more prominent inside the lesion as compared to outside so this, this is the third feature now going back to the study uh, okay, the frequency, I, I mentioned it before. Now, what about the diagnostic significance of, of uh, this criteria when it comes to compare melanoma in situ with the control group? So, of all the features, the ones with a diagnostic significance in the comparison were the five features that you can see in this slide. So, the three new structures that I just described plus atypical network and regression. And then, what's even more interesting was that if we limited the comparison between melanoma in situ and atypical excised nevi only, which obviously represents the most difficult differential diagnosis, then uh, the uh, atypical network and the regression lost their diagnostic significance because they were found, found almost equally uh, in melanoma in situ and atypical nevi. The only structures that retained their diagnostic significance, even in this very tough comparison, were the irregular hyperpigmented areas and the prominent uh, skin markings. And let me show you an example of uh, a melanoma in situ versus an atypical nevus. You see here that in both lesions there are some areas or of focal hyperpigmentation. The difference is that in melanoma these hyperpigmented areas are uh, irregularly shaped and they don't correspond to any known structure. In contrast, in the nevus, these darker areas correspond to darker network or to darker uh, globules. So irregular hyperpigmented areas makes the difference in this example. And in the next example, the structure that makes the difference between uh, this melanoma in situ and this nevus are the prominent creases of the skin, the prominent skin markings in the case of the melanoma in situ on the left. Let's finish this podcast with a couple of more examples. Uh, this is uh, another melanoma in situ. This one is quite easy to recognize. We can see some irregular globules, uh, uh, an area with atypical network and irregular hyperpigmented structures at the lower part. In the next one, uh, it's not that easy in terms of structures. Practically, the only structures that we see are these irregular hyperpigmented areas and the prominent skin markings, especially in the central part of the lesion. And in the next melanoma in situ, again, there is not much to see, but there are these irregularly shaped uh, hyperpigmented areas in some parts of the lesion, the only practically melanoma clue. And finally, my last case, and maybe the smallest melanoma of this collection, it's so small, as you can see within this circle, and if you take a look at the close-up, it's something like two millimeter in uh, diameter, so not easy to recognize clinically, but easy to recognize dermatoscopically if you know these new structures because they are very prominent in this example here, these irregularly shaped hyperpigmented areas. So that was it. Thank you very much for your attention.